Hello, my belly. Hope you're doing well as always. Now, the question I get asked so much from people who be, you know, beginner guitar students who come to me, uh, the lovely people, you guys on YouTube who comment and leave me messages is, what gear do I buy when I get electric guitar? You know, so this is, you know, of course, aiming to, you know, for people just starting to play the guitar. You know, there's such a vast, <laughs> you know, library of information. You know, people saying, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. Companies selling you stuff, all sorts of stuff. You read magazines, it's everywhere now, you know. So it can be, you know, quite overwhelming. You know, I remember when I first started playing guitar and, you know, like things when it came to changing strings and what plectrum do you get and all this kind of stuff. A capo, a capo, what language am I speaking? You know, all this kind of stuff. So I thought I'd just give you, you know, the, the meat and potatoes, the essentials of what to get when you buy your first electric guitar. So of course you want a guitar, okay? <laughs> you bought your electric guitar, all right? Now, this is a very, very nice Fender American Telecaster, but if you're on, you know, a slightly cheaper one, you would be probably playing something like this. This is my old Yamaha Pacifica 112. I got this in 1997, you know, it's my old friend. I got it when I just started playing the guitar. I would plug it in, but the soldering has gone in the input socket, so I need to get it done. But lovely guitar, right? So you've got your first electric guitar. So then what do you want to buy now? What you're going to want to buy is a tuner, okay? This is a very, very old, I'll do a little close up on it, uh, my old Korg tuner, which I've had, oh man, since 2002, all right? I think I paid about 90 pounds for it, which is quite expensive for a tuner. Um, I'm not saying buy that. You can buy the little clip-on tuners. I thought I had one round here. I've got actually another cork. I'm not endorsed by cork, but <laughs> I've got a couple of cork uh, tuner products and the little uh, clipper ones. I've got one in um, my stocking for Christmas actually, uh, because uh, from Santa, uh, I lost the other one and uh, I really like it. And I think it was about 15 quid, I think. So uh, the little uh, cork clip-on tuners. I'll put a link actually in the description box below to it. Um, so yeah, you want to get a tuner and you want to make sure you know the tuning notes. So from low to high, so from the six string to the bottom, E, A, D, G, B, E. They're the tuning notes you want to tune to and get used to always tuning up. Okay, so buy a damn tuner. Now, with effects pedals and all that kind of stuff, it can be, you know, overwhelming like I was saying. So what do I want to buy, Mike, you're asking? So I recommend, I've got two here, all right? So this first one, another old friend, all right? The Boss SD1, okay? This great little overdrive pedal from Boss. Um, these are, I think, 39 quid or something like that. Super, super cheap. As you can see on a close-up of my one, it's been played a lot. Um, lots and lots of people got it, uh, will have it and got it and get it. Um, yeah, it's a kind of mainstay on so many people's boards and um, like I say, cheap and cheerful. They've got an expensive version of it now. Um, personally, I wouldn't worry about that. I would, if you're just starting out, you know, just get a nice cheap one. And this one here is a Movell uh, Busy Bee uh, Overdrive pedal. I believe it's an overdrive. I've got a link actually to a review of this right, right there. And that never bores me doing that. Um, great little pedal, so, so small, as you can see. <laughs> I haven't got very big hands, trust me. And yeah, so very, really small. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how much these are, but I think in the same kind of price range, same colors, but drastically different. But having a good little overdrive pedal is really crucial, you know? So have a good pedal and you're going into a reasonable amp, which leads me to my next one. Here is my old Fender Stage 100, okay? Now, another amp I've had a very long time. It's very dusty, actually. Um, it's a solid state amp, okay? So it's not, it hasn't got tubes, basically. So what do I mean by tubes? When you think of ACDC, uh, Guns N' Roses, you know, Rock and Roll, Eddie Van Halen, to Oasis even, you know, they all used a thing called valve amps or tube amps. Um, and that has that, classic, fantastic tone, what we all love, okay? Um, but they're a little bit more expensive. Not much, you can get the little Vox AC4 TV, which is a little four watt um, tube amp. 
I've got one of those as well. Actually, I've got another view for that. You can get ding, right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's quite cool for little home use. Um, like I say, it goes from quarter to one watt to four watts. And I use that still a lot in my living room at mine. This amp I got when I was about, oh, gold, 14, I think. 14, 15 years old. So I've had it a while. Actually, well, five years. Um, but it's a solid state. It's 100 watts, clean and overdrive. Um, I'm not sure how much of these are even made now, actually. But um, I mean, it's about 300 quid. I think I got this for at the time. 300, maybe 400 pounds. Um, but it's nice. It's big. It's very loud. I never, ever have it past uh, two. <laughs> you know, in, in, in a room, in a bedroom kind of size, you know. So, um, yeah. This isn't a bad solid state amplifier if you want, you know, a biggish amp and uh, you can still gig with it and whatnot. But if you want to get more of a better tone, uh, yeah, you can get little four watt amps and stuff, but obviously you can't gig with them. Um, not really. I mean, you can mic it up still, but it won't really sound, it won't really be loud enough. But um, on a slightly cheaper version, getting a solid state amp, you're about to gig with it and um, it won't sound as good as a um, overdrive, oh, sorry, not overdrive, as a, a valve amp, but um, you know, it gets you kind of playing and playing with your mates and gigging and whatnot and that's what it's all about, not sitting there practicing our scales all the time. One more pedal I recommend getting when you're starting out for the first time when you've got your electric guitar, what else do you want to buy? You want to get a wah-wah pedal, okay? These are so much fun, so much expression can be had with it. Um, Jimi Hendrix, wah wah. Uh, you know, White Room Cream era, Eric Clapton, wah wah. You know, they're great, helps you build up your rhythm playing as well, having that kind of funky sound and whatnot. Fantastic pedal. This is uh, a Cry, no, Cry Baby, Jim Dunlop Cry Baby, wah wah. Again, this is a very, very old one, what I've had for years and years, a decade, over a decade now. Um, great pedal. These are about 80 quid, I think, something like that. So um, definitely, you want to get a Dunlop, well, not necessarily a Dunlop, but you want to get a Wawa pedal, 100%. So you've got your tuner, you've got your overdrive pedal, you've got your Wawa, and you've got your amp, and you've got your guitar. Now, after playing the guitar for a while, things are going to start going a bit. So you want to get, and I just happened to get a little delivery today of a new batch, strings, okay? So I use Roto Sound 10 gauge most of the time on my Strats and uh, Telecasters, and I use 11 gauge um, on my Gibson guitars. Have I got any 11s in here? Da -da -da -da. Fast forward, is 11s, all right? So I use 10 11 gauge for my electric guitars. So yeah, you wanna get some new strings, really important, okay? So don't just change one string at a time. Uh, what I mean by that, if you snap a string, a lot of people just change that one string and leave it. If one string snapped, change all six strings, okay? Don't just think, oh, I'll wait for the next one to snap, all right? And depends how much you play, but yeah, you kind of want to change probably every month, you know? And there's such a tonal difference between, you know, old dead strings and fresh new ones. So there's a load of products and brands out there, uh, but I just happen to use Roto Sound. And lastly, but no means leastly, my friends, the last thing you want to get and make sure you always get, is a lead, <laughs> okay? You wanna get a reasonably good lead. Don't buy too cheap, because they're usually poo, all right? So um, this, again, is a Roto Sound one, because I just ordered it when I was at the strings. Um, but there's loads of leads I've got. Um, here's a bunch are just on my box, and um, yeah, you've got the kind of gold-plated ones, which are quite good. You, you just wanna buy a good durable, reasonably medium size lead. Don't buy too thin. If, if you're buying a patch cable, fair enough. But yeah, don't get too thin and cheap. Basically, you, you pay for what you get, don't you? If you're gonna buy a seven pound lead, and then you buy, say, a 70 pound lead, you know, the 70 one is just gonna sound better, all right? Personally, I wouldn't pay 70 pound for a lead, you know, but I'd certainly go up to like, you know, 25, 30 quid for a good lead, you know, so. So, in reverse order, a lead, okay? Get a good lead. Wah wah pedal. Oh no, sorry, strings, wasn't it? Make sure you get a good fresh of string, you know, good fresh batch of strings. Um, you know, try and, you can find um, a lot of online stores that sell them in batch, batches, you know, instead of paying God knows how much in guitar shops. So lead, strings, 
get a wah wah pedal because they're amazing. Good overdrive pedal, a tuner, um, a good amp. All right, so like I say, solid state, Fender Stage 100, or if you want to get just more home use, I recommend a Box AC4 TV. Really, really great little amps. Unfortunately, I just haven't got one here. And of course, you want a good guitar, all right? So um, hopefully that's kind of helped. And you know, from there, run with it. You know what I mean? Like listen to your favorite players, what they're doing. You know, are they, you know, what gear are they using? Uh, what amps have they got? What guitars have they got? You know, and at the end of the day, we can get very lost in buying all this gear, can't we? But it does come down to the hands as well, you know. So don't get too, you know, hung up saying, oh, I haven't got this pedal or this secret lead or something like that, you know. Just work hard at the instrument and play with your friends, you know. If, if you, none of your mates play, put out little ads and whatnot in local papers or well, that's probably old school now, isn't it? You know, must be message boards online and stuff like that, you know. And then take the gear you buy and use it in a live environment because, you know, an amp volume on one is going to sound vastly different when the volume is on three or four, especially if you've got, uh, what, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> especially if you've got, you know, a good valve amp as well. Um, that's when it's really going to start singing. So, yeah. Get a really nice, no, reasonably good amp, but buy within your range, you know. So set yourself a range what you can pay and stick to that, you know. If you, if you see something about 20 quid more, maybe be nice to yourself, you know. But, you know, so get reasonably good amp, good guitar, and this bike, no, those are the essentials really. A good overdrive pedal and a wah-wah. And anything else from that, you know, reverb, a lot of reverb is already built in to amplifiers as well. Um, so you're sorted there, you don't need to buy a reverb pedal for the moment. And like I say, as time goes on, then start experimenting and see how far your wallet will take you, you know? So hopefully that's been a little bit of information for you and can help you, you know, and buying gear for your first electric guitar. Or if you've been playing for a while, <laughs> it knows how to kind of tame back your, um, all your gear to the bare essentials anyway. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If this is your first video, as always, subscribe, and I'll see you very, very soon. Mike Bradling, signing out.